Hi there, I'm Matt Hamlin. Uh, I'm a longtime software developer. I worked at Apple for a long time uh, over in Cupertino on a lot of different projects you've probably used before. Now I live here in Ireland where I teach people how to code with Swift, Apple's open source programming language, and I also coach the under 17's volleyball team for the, the country. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be there today, but I'm, I'm so excited to see what you produce, or at the very least, get started on. Uh, because that's what today's all about, getting, getting started and figuring out what path you're going to go with whatever vision you have for your project. Uh, last year's hackathon resulted in some amazing projects that I could see were really near and dear to your hearts. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about a tool I use all the time for figuring out what to build, uh, how I'm going to tackle it, and then how I get it into the hands of people who can really use it, uh, which is something you're focused on in today's hackathon. Now, at, at Apple, we learned a lot about how to build software and ship it successfully to our customers. And usually, we delighted those customers with the stuff we built. Um, so what they did was Apple took all those processes that we used to follow in all the teams that I worked in, and they've distilled them into a few different tools that you can use. And one of those tools is called the App Design Journal. And I have a copy of this here. And in fact, you can get a download of this uh, keynote file. Uh, from the links in the, the video below. So if I go to my resources folder, I have my app design journal here. It's a Keynote file. So if you're not familiar with Keynote, maybe you don't know the Apple platforms, uh, it's just like PowerPoint or Google Slides. Uh, it's a set of slides that encapsulate the process that we would follow when we were building projects at Apple. Whether we were in the middle of it or we were just starting out trying to figure out, well, what is it we're going to build exactly? Now, the nice thing about this app design journal is it's not just for apps. You can use this process to apply to anything you're going to build, even if it's not software related, but especially when we're building software for a hackathon, this will really help us crystallize our thoughts and focus on what is it I'm trying to build? What do I want to put in the hands of people when I'm done with this? And what kind of goals do I want to accomplish with that thing? It's really important to think about that stuff up front so that you don't have a lot of wasted time in the middle. Now, with hackathons, we don't have a lot of wasted time. So let's dive in and have a look at the process. Um, so in the app design journal, there are four steps. We have brainstorming, we have planning, prototyping, and then evaluating at the end. Now, that might look like a nice progression that we kind of go through those and then, cool, we're done when we hit evaluate. Uh, but we always loop back to the beginning. And we always got more stuff to work on. In fact, that evaluation phase is going to give us a lot of good feedback to work with. And we can go back to the brainstorming phase or maybe the planning phase, or maybe we're just fixing up our prototype a little bit. So this first step is brainstorming. So let's talk about that. This is very really important for a hackathon. Um, this is a stage where we might have no ideas at all, uh, which is a horrible situation to be in because you're just staring at that blank screen going, what on earth do I build? Uh, or you might have too many ideas, which is an equally tough situation because you might be just overflowing with ideas. And if you try to tackle all of them all at once, you're going to have a very hard time actually shipping anything. And that was one of our, our core drivers at Apple was make sure that if you build something amazing, it has to get into the hands of customers because otherwise you just have some amazing code or some amazing app uh, that no one's ever going to use. You really want people to use the thing that you're building. And to do that, you have to make sure that it's it's useful. So going through this process will really help you. So these three slides here, you can see the ones in green, they'll really help us identify a larger problem uh, we might want to tackle. Uh, if you're stuck at this stage, you might want to visit the UN's uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, they've got a list of goals that we would like to achieve as a, as a society uh, and try to help alleviate some of these things. Like number one is no poverty. Two is zero hunger. Uh, some of these might spark an idea that you might be able to apply to your own community and say, actually, we could, we could build an app that would really help with this type of situation or build a project that would help to, with this kind of situation. Now I'm going to say app quite a lot. These concepts also apply to projects. So if you're building something in Python or using micro bits, or you're actually just trying to build a, a process maybe for 
uh, for managing a, a food bank and there's no technology involved at all, all of this stuff can potentially help you. So you can go to that website, the sdgs.un.org, and that'll have that list of sustainable development goals. So while we're brainstorming, we'll think of that big idea. Uh, we've got a few slides here that we can kind of work through, and we can either edit the slides themselves if we have a Mac or an iPad or even an iPhone, um, or you can draw this up on a whiteboard uh, or down on some pieces of paper. You can brainstorm those list of opportunities, the problems, the challenges, something that you might want to build an app about. The thing I love about this is that there's no pressure. We can just jot down a bunch of ideas. And in fact, we would often sit in a room and jot down the most random ideas that would come into our head, just on the off chance that maybe something's going to come out of it. The nice thing about this whole process is it takes a lot of that pressure off of you. You don't have to say, oh man, I really need to get something done in 24 hours and I need to ship something. It has to be this. Don't panic. We'll start with some big ideas and we'll start to whittle them down and, and chunk off little bits that we can, we can actually wrap our, our head around and actually build. So by writing these down as well, we'll have a nice record of our thought process along the way. This will really help us come back and go, oh yeah, I remember which way we were going with this. Because itself, sometimes you go off on a lunch break, you come back and you go, ooh, where were we again? Why did we decide? Why do we have these three words written up there? If you capture a lot of it and you have lots of paper or lots of whiteboards around, uh, that'll really help you capture your ideas. That'll kind of be our guiding star through our project. Personally, I like to use a, a whiteboard or a digital whiteboard because they're kind of, they're a little bit more interactive. We can kind of play around with them. So once we get that big idea, the big purpose that we're searching for, we do start to whittle it down. And we come up with a few different ideas here. You can see we have multiple boxes that we want to fill in for my app idea or my project idea. And also the key reason for building that app. How is my app going to help? We don't want to build just a calendar app just for the sake of building a calendar app. We want to build it because it's going to be useful to us or to someone we care about. So at this stage, we can start to figure out maybe who our audience is as well. Are we building this for our grandparents? Are we building this for our friends? Are we building this for our neighbors? I know one example I always use is I live not too far from the beach. So we have a great girl around here that you've probably heard of, Flossie who does a lot of beach cleanups. Maybe how could we figure out how to help organize some of those beach cleanups? And this is how we're gonna spell it all out. Now this app idea and this stuff that we write down here where we've crystallized our thoughts is gonna help us later when we're going to pitch this app idea. And it could be pitching it to somebody who's gonna give us money. It could be pitching it to the judges who are gonna be judging the hackathon. They could be pitching it just to the person who you thought this app would be a great idea for. So this is where this is going to help. When you actually write this down, now your app might change as we go through the development process. That's part of the fun of the whole process is stuff changes and we go back and fix it and say, all right, well, this maybe we've changed focus. We're not building a beach cleaning app anymore. Maybe we're building a, a social gathering app because that's what we really want out of it. Something to help us all get together and just meet up not necessarily clean a beach. So that's the brainstorming phase. This is usually a ton of fun. It's a great thing to do in a group. Um, even if you're all designing different projects, you can all sort of brainstorm together and we have a bunch of things up on the board. If somebody gets an idea for a beach cleaning app, it's going to look very different in the two different implementations just because you're going to have different focuses. And we're going to see when we get to the planning phase next that this is where things start to filter out a little bit and they do get a little bit different. So that's the brainstorming phase. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, it's something that we should enjoy. And if we are ever stuck, definitely go to those sustainable goals or go ask around. Say, what is a problem you might have in our school, in our community, in our sports club? And how can we solve it? The best apps and the best ideas you're going to have are going to be things that are relevant to you that are really, like I said before, near and dear to your heart that mean a lot to you because you'll be encouraged to go all the way through with it. 
Now, the next stage is planning. This is where we take our big idea and we break it down. Uh, and I know if you've got a bit of coding experience, this is where, and I know I've definitely fallen into that trap too as a, a software developer. You're like, oh man, I'm going to go start writing some code and let's, let's get this down. Uh, the planning stage is where we say, let's take a little step back first before we go writing a bunch of code. Um, cause that takes a bit of time. That's a lot of thought work that goes into it. And you can, you can spend a lot of mental and emotional energy on writing your code. And then you get really attached to it. So if we go through our planning phase first, you'll be much better off because the stuff that you, when you actually do start writing code and spending all that time thinking about it, you'll be along a much better path rather than just kind of winging it. We can wing it, but man, oh man, does it get really difficult uh, at a certain stage. And if we ever get stuck, it can be really hard to untangle uh, the path that we've gone down. So this is why I really emphasize that yeah, you go down the planning path and make sure we know exactly what it is we're building. So what we do first to break things down is we can do the same thing with a whiteboard. Usually I try to grab another whiteboard or some more paper. We're going to outline user actions in my app. What are people actually going to do? How are they going to interact with it? We also want to think about how does this fit into their daily life? If it is a beach cleaning app, how are we going to go uh, capture, like what's, what are the main actions we're going to do? Are we going to capture trash as we pick it up? Are we going to, would it be easier if we just took a picture of the trash and, and have the, uh, the phone figure it out itself using machine learning? There's an excellent example. If you ever do get stuck when you're going through these planning slides, there are some excellent examples of this app called Bug Buzz. So this is an app that we're thinking about where we want to capture bugs in our backyard, identify them, be able to search and, and re remember those bugs that we found in our backyard. And also update information about the bugs. Maybe we, we are. We're, we, this is our, our future. We want to study bugs and you know keep a big record of all the bugs that we found and where we found them there. There are Latin names and everything. Uh, this is what we started to outline in this example. So if you're stuck in the planning phase and you're like, I'm not sure, what does it mean? User actions in my app or my project. This is where we can go and, and get just a, a reminder by imagining that we're building this bug buzz example. So a user would need to take a photo of a bug. Well, we also need to store that information somewhere so we can get back to it later. Because we want to be able to search and say, oh, yeah, let's look, look up uh, ladybird or let's look up mosquito. We'll need to be able to add new bugs when they're found. And then we also want to, we'd love to see probably a gallery of all the bugs that we've found. So we'll have every other slide here. We'll have an example of how to use these, these slides in action. So these are the user actions in my app. And we're, again, we're not thinking of necessarily uh, the actual actions and what it's going to look like, and we're not drawing the interface just yet. We're still just thinking at a high level, what are the major things someone has to do to accomplish this big task that I want them to do? So in this case, we're just, we've got a bug catalog. All right, so they need to take photos of the bugs. They need to be able to store information about them. That's it. We haven't gone into anything about what camera we're going to use or anything like that. So then from there, we, then we do start to break it down a little bit. So once we have our list of user actions that are going to be performed, these are the, the smaller buckets from the larger app idea that we're starting to filter things down into. So we can start to think, well, what's the most important thing? What are we going to tackle first? On well, the bugs buzz example, uh, we probably want to be able to take the photo of a bug first, or maybe just enter in information about the bug. We'll, we'll ignore the photo part for now. What's most important to, to us? Do we want it to be a very visual app? Well, this is where we start to think about the implementation a little bit more. So in this example, we say, all right, well, the user's going to aim the camera at a bug and taps the button. That's the very first, that's the most important feature that we have. So if I'm building this out, that's probably what we're going to tackle first. Now that's getting ahead of ourselves because that'll come up in the prototyping section. But this is, we take that stuff that we've 
made on the user actions slide. And now we start to break it down and think about, okay, so someone takes a picture of a bug. What kind of things have to happen inside my app? Inside our apps or our projects, we're always dealing with different data that's coming in from users. It could be they're typing in questions if we're building a chatbot. So how do we respond to those questions? It could be they're taking photos. What do we do with those photos? What do we do with the information they've typed in? So that's stuff that, that we're doing in our app or our project is going to be, that's going to be the changes to the app state. So we need to think about, well, what kind of things do we need to do? Again, we're not thinking of, oh, I'm going to store it in this variable or I'm going to use this database or, or anything. Uh, we're just thinking of what are the kind of larger things that we have to do. In fact, we haven't even talked about a specific programming language or framework or device at this stage. We're just talking about actions that we want the user to take. And then what kind of stuff will we have to do in our app? So this is a really good start and we'll have a list of features there. And then we'll also start to prioritize them. And we'll say, well, what are the most important ones here? Um, maybe for my app, I think I care most about just having a list of bugs that I can search. I don't care so much about the photos. I want to have more information about them. So maybe as I find a bug, I'll, I'll type in, I'll go research them and then I'll type in some of that research. So maybe this one is my number one feature. So on the whiteboard, I might write a big number one, two, three, four, five, and lit number all the features I have in the order that I want to tackle them that I think are most important to my app. Now, if you're stuck and you're thinking, oh man, I don't know how the user is going to interact with my app. Or if you're even still stuck at the brainstorming stage and you don't know what kind of app you're going to write, I love slide 12 because it shows us a good suite of the things that we can do with modern devices. And now some of these are specific to iPhones, but they're specific, they, they kind of refer to many different type of devices that we have today. A lot of devices have a microphone, a keyboard, a touchscreen, gyroscopes, accelerometers. A lot of different machines will allow us to do augmented reality things or run machine learning algorithms. So this is one of my favorite slides to go to if we're ever stuck for what are we going to do? How is the person going to interact with my app? Oh, how can we integrate the microphone? Maybe, maybe that's going to be a key way that someone interacts with my application is just by voice and not by typing things out because maybe that's a bit too cumbersome and a bit slow. Maybe it's for, for younger kids uh, and they're not ready to type yet. They don't know how to read. So I'm going to need to use the microphone and the speakers to interact with them. So I love this slide just for getting ideas and then also helping refine some of those, those inputs that I'm going to use and I'm going to target. Now, my other favorite slide, especially in this planning section, is the inclusion slide. So that's on slide 14. And this is where we think about all the different people who might benefit from our app. Now, obviously, the first and foremost person we might think of when we're building an app for ourselves is ourselves. And we're made a certain way and we have certain capabilities. Uh, but other people may not. They may not see colors the same way we do. They may not hear the same way we do. So I love that this slide kind of reminds us to consider those other users. Now, some of it might be permanent. Uh, somebody may have lost the use of a, a limb permanently and they've only got the use of one hand. Um, other people may have a temporary disability. That's not even a disability. They may just not have the use of their arm because they're carrying a child all the time. So maybe it's an app for your parents and you've got a new brother or sister and your mom and dad are always using the phone with one hand. So we have to consider that kind of thing too when we're thinking about designing our app and how people are going to interact with it. Maybe then we do need the microphone so that they can interact with it with their voice because they just don't have the hands available to them. So by the time we're done with that planning phase, we should have a whiteboard full of ideas. Uh, from the big idea to our specific app idea and goal to all the pieces of our app uh, that would go into someone using it and all the different people who might use our app. Now, it doesn't have to be exhaustive and this doesn't have to take forever. This is just a, a quick first pass. 
to get those ideas on the board because all of this stuff is fluid and flexible and we can always come back later and say oh do you know what actually i forgot uh based on watching people use my prototype that we're going to get to next they like to use it this way and i forgot about this feature that they could really take advantage of so let's go back and add that in to our user actions and our input and app state and let's think about that stuff so we're always coming back to this stage to update it as we go through the process Then comes the fun part. So we've gone through our planning. We've got a really good idea of our, our app's shape. I tend to use Keynote, and I'll have different slides with some major bullet points of the different user actions and app states that I'm capturing and, and dealing with. Then we get into the prototype. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth here, because really what we're talking about today is how do we generate those ideas? How do we structure our ideas so that we're able to ship an app at the end of all of it? And then how do we pitch that app, especially to the judges? So the journal will have some great tips for prototyping. And the one tool that they emphasize as a great prototyping tool is Keynote. And I'm going to show you an example. So we have uh, a few screens here where we, we walk through designing our app screens. So we take some of those user actions and we use a pen and paper and we just draw out the different screens. So if we're thinking about that bug buzz example again, they give you an example here. So we imagine that we have a home screen where we want to take a photo of the bugs. We have a gallery where we have the list of all the bugs we've seen. And then we have a search function. Another screen we might have is the screen where we actually take a photo of the bug with a few buttons that the user sketched out. And then a way to add data about the bug. So now that we've taken a photo, let's add a name, the where it was found, and then some notes about it. So when we're prototyping, we're just sketching this stuff out. This is a good one to bounce off other people and say, well, what do you think? Does this make sense? Is this a bit awkward? Could we condense that? When we're prototyping, we'll often look at examples of apps that we use all the time. We'll go and say, well, how does Instagram do it? How do TikTok do it? How do the popular ones that we're using right now do it? I like to personally take a look at the, the built-in apps on the phone or on the pad that I'm using so I can try to match what they're doing as well. There'll be a link in the, the description of the video to the human interface guidelines for Apple. That is a great place to go, even if you're not building software for Apple devices because they put a lot of thought into, well, how do we want people to interact with our, our applications? How do we really emphasize the human part of human interaction? So that's a great place to go. The link will be in the video. So I'm gonna show you a quick example. This goes through the storyboard as well. So once we get the screens, the individual screens, we start drawing arrows and trying to figure out, well, what goes where? When we tap on a button, where do we go from there? How are we going to respond to users here? And they've added some notes about what happens. All right, we've changed the screen. We're freezing the image. We have an action where we delete the image and go back to the camera. We've got the whole flow now. So we designed the individual screens. Now we've designed the interaction between them and how a person's going to, when they're tapping around on the screen, what's going to happen and what should they expect to happen? So if I have a quick look here, I've actually got the prototype. You can go download it yourself. It's in the app design journal. This one here is a really good example of someone building a prototype with some links that you can then use. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna play this in the window. And this looks amazing if you're running Keynote on, um, on an iPad, but I'm gonna play the slideshow and we can see that they've added some animations. And when I mouse over here, I can tap on this to go to the take photo screen. They've got a placeholder there so that we know, okay, well, in a real app, this would be the, the image preview. I've got some buttons down here that I can tap on. I've got a home button. I can hit the check mark. And where it should bring me is to this screen. So now all that work that I did before, where I laid out the different screens and then the user interactions between them, I started to build out in Keynote as a prototype. 
And the beautiful thing about using Keynote as a prototype is that it behaves like an app. This will look like, if I'm running on, on an iPad, it'll look just like any other app on my iPad. Now, we'll have missing photos and we, we won't be able to enter in the text. But we can tap on these items and have a look at what it might look like. So that I can put this in front of the judges or I can put it in front of someone who wants to give me money to pay for this bug gallery app. Or in front of my friends, because maybe I'm building it for my friends and we want to capture all the bugs that we see in the neighborhood. And the really important thing about building it in Keynote is that I haven't gone and written a lot of code that I'm really invested in and I've spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And it'll be really hard for me to take out. If someone says, actually, do you know what? I don't like this. I don't like this gallery of, of images. Maybe we should scrap it. Oh, that's going to really hurt. If I've gone and coded all of this and spent all the time to build that out, oh, man, that's going to be tough. So that's why we build it in Keynote, because I've spent much less time. Yeah, I spent a little bit of time building this out, adding the links here as well that'll send me from slide to slide. But I haven't spent as much time as I would have if I had coded this. So this that's just a good tip for avoiding a bit of heartache. You know, try to do that prototyping first. And there's some really good tips here in the prototyping section. This is usually a session all unto itself. We'll talk about how to prototype and we'll go through building quite a few prototypes ourselves. But like I said, that's not the focus of today. The focus of today is how do I come up with my idea? How do I structure the different features and figure out how am I going to build them and actually ship something, especially when I don't have a lot of time. So once you've built a prototype, even just on paper, we're going to drop into the evaluation phase. This is where we're handing it over to other people uh, for them to take a look at it. And we want to make sure that we get really good feedback back from them so that we can see how real people are using our app. It could even be ourselves. We could just let it sit for a day, come back to it and say, all right, let me try using this prototype that I sketched out on some paper. Oh, actually, do you know what? It doesn't make sense the way I was when I, I thought that when I tap on this, I should go to this screen. Maybe that doesn't make sense. That's an extra tap, too many. So in the evaluation phase, we have our working prototype. We've done all of our work to build features. This is a great slide to visit, especially for when you're going to be presenting to the judges. This is the core of what you want to put into your app pitch to the judges. You want to answer these questions here. The big one is why. What problem is your... Why are you building this app in the first place? What's the problem your app is trying to solve? The who? Who's it aimed at? Is it going to be aimed at uh, grandparents? Is it going to be aimed at kids? Is it going to be aimed at everybody? That's a bit of a tough one. Usually you have somebody in mind when you're building an app. And that's a key ingredient to include in your app pitch. The what is the overview of the app. So well, just the, they often call it the elevator pitch, which is kind of what we're doing here. The core reason for it again. And then ideally a, a demonstration of the prototype. Walk someone through it, especially if we're just doing an app pitch and maybe we're in the very early stages. We might need to walk through the, the prototype ourselves. And then we can get into the how. If we have time, we can talk about the details of, well, what did we think about for the user experience? Maybe it is designed for new parents, and we expect that they're not going to have all their hands free all the time. So we can call out that, yep, actually, we're going to use the microphone of this device uh, to drive it for the most part. We're not going to worry about a keyboard because we just don't think people are going to be able to type for our app experience. We can also talk about some of the design features. maybe. Uh, compare it to some of the other apps that we've borrowed some inspiration from. And then make sure that you capture the feedback from the judges. That's going to be really important, especially the judges for the hackathon, because they're going to be experienced in this kind of thing. And they'll be able to give you good advice on, okay, well, what do you need to improve? What little tweaks might you make to your idea? What could make it really, really sing? Now, you don't have to take all of it on, but it's very important to capture that feedback because maybe down the line, 
you'll capture the feedback and you'll say, oh, I don't need to do that just now. But that feedback might keep coming back up again and again. And if you have it in your notes, you'll say, and do you know what? Enough people have said the same thing that I probably should act on that feedback. Now, if you do have a prototype and you can hand it over to someone else, it's very hard to hand over a prototype, especially something that you made your own creation and, and hand it over to someone else. Make sure that you prepare some tests for your prototype. Give the person you hand the, the prototype a, a bit of a script. Even if it's something that you just say out loud. Oh, do you know what? Uh, I haven't implemented the bug gallery yet. All I've implemented are the, can try to take a picture of a bug uh, and then enter some data about that bug. And that's it. If I've done that, then I won't waste a lot of time with the, the person I've given to saying, oh, the bug gallery doesn't work. I don't like it. Because maybe I haven't gotten to that yet. This is the important thing about the prototype and the planning. I said earlier on, we don't want to do everything all at once. Well, if we don't do everything all at once, make sure in your testing script that you mention that and say, this is what we're focused on. The only feature I implemented right now was the taking a photo of a bug screen. So that's what I want you to test. All the other stuff is unfinished just yet. That'll really help you get really good feedback because people will be focused on the stuff that you want to focus on. And it'll also not throw you into a panic that they might go somewhere off the beaten track because you've said, look, I haven't implemented that. Don't, don't go in there. So that's probably my favorite bit of advice from this whole app design journal. And it'll help keep you on the right track by just focusing people, yourself and other people when they're testing your prototype. You can also use this slide here to capture feedback from people as they're using your app. Maybe you've, you've said, actually, I'm, I'm at the stage where I've built the whole app. Everything should be fully functional. And I've just given them little hints. Okay, go ahead and try to, to add a bug to the app. And I'm not going to show them where to tap because you won't be there with the users when they're using your app out in the wild. If you ship it and someone in Malaysia downs your, downloads your app, you're not going to be able to fly over there and help them walk them through adding a bug to your app. They're going to need to be able to figure it out themselves. So when you have your testers nearby, you want to note things like, were they able to find the right button to add a, a bug to the screen? Were they confused? Did they get a little bit lost at a certain point? And then also, did the app do what I said it was going to do? If my app was supposed to be about cataloging bugs, but maybe I got distracted, started adding some other features, I need to think, well, if they enjoyed that this new feature I made, maybe I made a game out of it. So it's not about capturing bugs anymore at all. It's about maybe it's like a Pokemon Go, but for bugs. Maybe I need to go back to the planning stage and the brainstorming stage and say, actually, I thought my app was about this. It's now it's about something a little bit different. That happens all the time where we build something and we go, oh, it's being used slightly different than I thought it was going to be. Maybe I should pursue that more. But this is going to be so important because all this feedback is where you're going to be able to take it here to our last slide and say, okay, let me think about the feedback that I got. And now I can go figure out if I need to go back to the brainstorming stage. Maybe my app idea changed completely. Maybe my app idea is still the same, but I want to focus on different features. So I'm going to have to go back to the planning stage. Maybe it wasn't super clear how to use my prototype. So maybe I have to just change some of the design. Maybe the buttons, it wasn't clear there were actually buttons. So I want to go back to my prototype and make it more clear that uh, this is the path we're going down. So the features were good, but my actual prototype wasn't brilliant. And then sometimes we might have to go back and say, actually, I asked them to test the wrong things. We have to test something different. So I can even go back to the evaluation stage at this point. So sometimes you'll see these drawn as a big circle that we kind of, we go through brainstorming, planning, prototyping, evaluating them back to the beginning. It's not quite as simple as that. Sometimes we shoot back to different areas. But this is a great tool and there's some amazing links in here. So if you, you have a Mac or an iPad or an iPhone, uh, I highly recommend going and downloading this. The link will be in the description below. 
and there'll be some other links there as well some with some links to other design resources that you can take advantage of that will really help you simplify your thinking like i said uh, i wish i was there today with you but i cannot wait to see what you build and good luck